Hi, my name is Chuck. Uh, in this series of videos, we are building a message board, uh, a simple web page where you can enter messages and they'll appear on the page. And we'll eventually have a login and authentication system to keep track of who posted which messages. For now, though, as of the last video, we have this message board. And you can say hello, of course. Um, but when you restart the code, all the messages that were submitted by users go away. Our goal today is going to be to store the messages in a database so we can retrieve them uh, between code restarts and persist them. The first thing we're going to need to do, though, is actually a bit of a tooling upgrade. So let's go ahead and oh, get a little preview of the future there. Let's go ahead and install something called ESM. There are multiple different ways of importing code from other places in JavaScript. What we've been using so far is called uh, require. It's something that Node.js invented when they needed something, when there was nothing official. Um, but there is now something official. There's import statements in the language proper called ES modules. But Node support isn't quite there yet. We're installing a package that's going to make it a little bit easier. Just a moment ago, I ran a command npm i esm, and that added esm to my dependencies list. And now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define a start script. Before, when we started our code, we had been running node index.js repeatedly. Now we're going to run npm start, and then npm will call the command here. All this does is this runs what we were running before, node index.js, but with this argument pair that says load ESM for us. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite these import these require statements as import statements. Okay. So now when we run npm start, our code should behave exactly as it did before, and it doesn't. Ah. I missed the space there. Okay. Our code now runs exactly as it did before. Let's go ahead and stop it, and we're going to install a database. We're going to install SQLite because it's self-contained. Uh, normally, when you normally when you install a database, you install a standalone application, and then your database application and your web application talk to each other. But we're going to be using SQLite because it's completely self-contained. So let's go ahead and install their instructions, or follow their instructions to install it. Uh, you can run these two as separate commands, or in npm. In the case of npm install, first of all, save is unnecessary now. It saves by default, and then you can pass as many packages as you want as additional arguments. It'll install them all in one go. So, uh, let's just talk about their README for a moment. We're just going to copy some code from the README and talk for a bit. SQLite databases are files. They're just plain files that you store on your computer. We're going to store ours right inside of our repo called data.db, but we are going to ignore it. We don't want to commit it. We just want it to be easy to find for debugging. So we're going to add it to our get ignore. All right, back to index.js. The open function from SQLite returns a promise. In JavaScript, a promise is like a box that may or may not have a value in it. But it should have a value in it in the future. So what you do is you await a promise, and that pauses your code and then unpauses when you need to get the value out. So I'll get into that more right now, actually. This opens our database and returns a promise. So let's go ahead and store the promise. And let's go ahead and use it. Uh, we're going to create a, fun a setup function that includes our server starting code in it. 
So I'll explain this in a moment, I promise. Cool. So what's going on here is, oh, we also have to call, no. We have to call our setup function. There we go. So what's happening here is this is the syntax in JavaScript for function. We've been using it this whole time. Uh, async means it's a function that can be that returns a promise one, and it means that it can be paused with the await keyword. What the await keyword does is it pauses your code and waits for the promise to have a value in it to become. We call that becoming resolved. When the promise resolves, we grab the value out of the promise and return it. So this evaluates to the DB. And DB promise is a promise because you use promises to represent data that takes time to retrieve. So stuff like opening a database uh, from your disk takes time. Stuff like making requests to other websites and other web services takes time. Um, mostly things relating to input and output are promises. Um, so opening the database returns a promise as we specified we save it to db promise and then we await that promise meaning we pause this whole function until the database is open and then we assign it to db then we wait for db.migrate we'll get to that in a moment and then we start our server uh, and then we call setup the reason this all has to be inside of a function is because not all versions of node.js support using await at the top level there's some complexity there that I don't want to get into, so I've simply wrapped our setup procedure in a function. Okay, so what is a migration? When you have your web application running in the wild and you've got user data in your database, when you want to change the shape of your database, you want to add a new table, add a new field, anything like that, you have to run a bit of SQL. But generally speaking, you only want to run that SQL once, and you want to keep track of which SQL is run. So SQLite, the library, already has a migration system in place for us to make sure that it will run our SQL only once, and it also provides a mechanism to undo the migration and redo it again if we have to, which is kind of nice. So we're going to use that migration system to define our initial database. Make a migrations folder. Make a file called 001 initial schema.sql. Okay, the way these migration files work is you write a comment. In SQL, comments are two dashes, up, down. All the code under the up comment will be the code that gets run when the migration gets run. And then we'll also provide some code to undo that code in case we need to undo, roll back, and then re-perform the migration. So we're just going to create table message ID. Every resource in a database needs a primary key, a unique way of identifying it compared to other messages. Um, in SQLite, if you provide an integer primary key and you don't set it when you create the resource, it will automatically set it for you in an incrementing number, which is convenient. And then our down, our undo, is simply drop table message. There's our first migration. So we should be able to start our code. It created a data.db file. We go into SQLite Studio, which you're free to download. I'll leave a link in the description. We can open our file. I had it already. And we can see our messages table. Might be a little hard to see in the YouTube video. But um, it's an empty table at the moment. We can add something to it. Let's add something to it. ID1 text first message in database. So our database now has a message in it. Let's pull it from the database. Right now we have this messages array, which is simply an array at the top level. Uh, let's go ahead and delete that. We don't need it anymore. We're going to pull the data from the database every time we get a new request to make sure we always have the most up-to-date information. So in our home route, in our slash, we'll make this asynchronous. 
from, I think we called our table message with a capital M. Yes, we did. Okay, so what we're doing here is first we're awaiting the DB promise. Again, even though by the time this runs, we'll have already established a connection to our database, it's still inside a promise, so we still need to use await to get it out of the promise. Even though you and I, looking at the code, know that nobody will be able to hit the slash route until we've done this and we've already migrated and waited for the promise. Um, but don't worry about that. We have to await a promise. db.all will return an array of values given by a specific query, and it takes the query. And so this is just some SQL. This is select star from message. This is about as simple as SQL queries get. Um, it simply means select every field from the message table, um, and it'll return it into the messages array because of equals await. So let's try that and see if it works. Every time we change our JavaScript, we need to control C to stop it and then npm start to restart it. Object, object. Okay, so that did work. Uh, let's validate that it works before we go any further. Object, object. We don't want that. But in our console, we can see that first message in database with an ID of one is there in the database. Um, and it's inside of an array. We'll go ahead and just to make this a little more obvious, we'll log the zeroth item, the first item in the array. The only item in the array. Here we go. We have an object with an ID of one and a text of first message in the database. So the reason we're getting object object is because our template from last time still just renders this. For each message, it renders the entire message, which is not what we want anymore. The, me the whole message used to just be a string, but now each message is an object that looks like this. So we need to render this dot text, or in the case of handlebars, you can simply say text. Uh, inside of the each, there's actually a different scope. And so text refers to this dot text for each message inside the each. Let's refresh the page. There it is, first message in database. And you know what? We can show the ID as well. You can go ID text. And now we get the ID in the text. Hopefully that's clear. Um, now we need to store the messages from the user. So that is going to be relatively simple as well. We'll stop logging because we don't need that anymore. Uh, message post should be async. Um, instead of pushing the messages, we don't even have a messages array in scope anymore. Let's await db.run. We don't need to return anything with the database, so we're just gonna run insert into message text values question mark normally you would put the value that you want to insert into the text field in this question mark and then you can have multiple fields with separated by commas multiple values separated by commas um, but we want to make sure that the user can't insert like a uh, raw sql code or anything so instead of just doing string concatenation we're leaving a question mark and then we're gonna every question mark can correspond to an additional argument in all the SQLite querying methods. So we can just say message text. And then what it will do is it will take the message text argument, sanitize it, make sure there's no SQL or anything in it, and then insert it into the question mark and then run this query for us. And we'll see that in action in a moment. Second message in database. You'll notice we didn't specify the ID column because I mentioned before, if you have an integer primary key, SQLite will increment that for you. So when I hit send, I'll get an ID of two and the second message in the database. And if I go back to SQLite and I refresh, you'll see we have that second message in the database. So this seems like a pretty good place to commit and call it the end of video two.